Well, many parents who have gone through it already know it can sometimes take years to adopt a healthy child from overseas. That's why more and more families are choosing to adopt a child with a special need or a special medical condition. That type of overseas adoption may only take months. But sometimes the parents end up with far more than they bargained for. When the Moyer family decided they wanted to adopt a child from China, they were told a healthy child would take seven years. So then the other option was special needs. And one of them was minor heart that we said we would be open to. But one month after getting home, the Moyers learned their new daughter's heart problem was much more serious. There was a doctor here that, that day that told us that he didn't think that she was still operable. It wasn't easy. Bren nearly died during her two surgeries. Dr. Deborah Davis was on the team that helped save her. There was a lot of simpatico there, I would say. Dr. Davis herself adopted a child with what she thought was a minor facial deformity 30 years ago. Nine surgeries later, Katie, now a nurse, is okay, but... I think that we all would admit, if we were honest with ourselves, whoa, we didn't really bargain for all this. That's why pediatrician Dr. Katie Cronin cautions families to always ask for medical records, but no, they may not be correct. If at all possible, I would tell families, ask for a video. You can have your pediatrician or an adoption consultant review the records and video and then conference call the overseas doctor with questions. So I don't think parents should go into this thinking like, I'm just lucky to get a child and I shouldn't ask any questions because it's not true. As for Bren, she's a fighter. Overcoming her problems with heart and her new siblings. Once back in the States, Dr. Cronin recommends taking your child to a pediatrician for a thorough examination. And she may know better than most as she too adopted her daughter with a medical need from overseas. Well, as we just saw, some adoptions can come with challenges, but in the end, it can be very exciting and rewarding. Now, maybe you're considering adding to your family by way of adoption. If you're like a lot of people, you may have no clue where to begin. So joining us this afternoon with some answers and guidance is Jamie Truitt from the Wicomico Department of Social Services. Jamie, thank you so much for joining us. Sure, thanks for having me. So a lot of people who are interested in adoption have a pretty good idea uh, what goes on, but may not know exactly where to start. Right. Help us with that. Okay, so in the state of Maryland, you can adopt in a several different formats. It can be a public adoption from foster care, private adoption through an agency, and independent adoption, or as you just saw, international adoption. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm from, as you said, the Wicomico County Department of Social Services, so I'm gonna talk to you a little about public adoption. Are there um, certain requirements that you have to meet to adopt? Yes, um, first thing would be is to contact your local Department of Social Services. You wanna talk to the home recruiter there or the adoption coordinator there. Um, you can answer, um, get any preliminary questions that you have answered on that telephone call and they'll send you information through the mail. Uh, the requirements that you asked about, Lisa, mm -hmm. um, in the state of Maryland, we require that adults be the age of 21, mm -hmm. um, that they can be single, married, they can cohabitate, they can be heterosexual or same-sex couples. Um, they can have children through birth or adoption or no children at all. Uh, and there really isn't an age restriction. We just look at the family and see um, that they're well-being and they're able to keep up with the children whom they want to adopt. Mm -hmm. right. uh, and then we do ask questions about um, mental, physical, emotional health as well. Okay. All right. So you're talking public adoptions. Yes. Are those medical records available? Um, yes, medical records are available for um, all the children that we have. We um, make sure that we review all social family history with family, the prospective adoptive family on the child right. uh, who will be placed with them. Are there um, any special, is there any special training that parents need to go through before they start the process? Absolutely. The state of Maryland has a PRIDE training, mm -hmm. which is Parent Resources and Information for Development and Education, PRIDE. Pride. Uh -huh. okay. um, PRIDE is a nine-week training session. Um, it's held in all three counties here on the Lower Shore, Wicomico, Somerset, and Worcester. And through that process, we really talk about nurturing, development, family connectedness, and answer a lot of those questions and offer training. However, if you are interested or a family is interested in a particular child that has a special need or a diagnosis, we can do one-on-one -on -one trainings or there's other training statewide or in the community. Okay, so what resources are out there that, that 
can help us get started? Sure. There um, is the Maryland State website, which is dhr.state.md.us. I'll make sure you guys have that. We'll mm -hmm. put that on our Dave website. Thomas Foundation for Adoption, uh -huh. childwelfare.gov, and all of those will give you information on adopting from foster care. There's also a great resource locally, which is the Lower Shore Adoption Network. Okay. They meet the third Tuesday of the month from 6 to 7.30. They offer dinner and child care, and they meet at Allen Memorial Baptist Church here in Salisbury, and you can like us on Facebook. Book. And that's tomorrow night. Um, we actually are skipping January. Okay. So we will resume in February. February. Yes. Gotcha. Okay. And we have speakers come in, families share their stories. Sometimes we do outings. It just depends on what the group wants to do, but it's a great group, and I encourage anybody who wants to adopt or whom has adopted that they attend. All right, great yes. information. Jamie, right. thank you. Sure, thank what you so much. Today? Yes. And if you would like to read more about the adoption process or find resources to help, go to delmarvalife.com and click on the show tab. Now, when it comes to family, we'll do anything to protect them, but a common medication you may often give your children can put them at risk of a serious condition. But it's not just found in certain medications. We'll learn more about Rye Syndrome and find out what you can do to protect your family. And a little later on, dress up your walls with wallpaper. Seriously, <laughs> it is making a comeback. We're going to learn about the different options you now have. You might be surprised, and we're going to find out which type of wallpaper may be the best for you. The Marble Life, we'll be right back.